And now that's all of them. All of what? The bosses. Even the ones that require you to go to Timbuktu? Uh, what? And then find all the pieces of Exodia so they can come together to form Optimus Prime, the final Great Rune boss? Whoa, man, spoilers! Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, no matter how you treat your time in Elden Ring, one thing is inevitable. Bosses. Whether main story bosses or side bosses, they are absolutely everywhere, and they are absolutely the most major part of this game, but specifically in a game as open as Elden Ring is, it can be really easy to miss some of the cooler or more rewarding bosses simply because of how densely packed the game is as a whole. And as such, today I will be showing you another 8 optional bosses that you don't want to miss in Elden Ring. There will be fair warning before showing each boss on screen, and I will tell you beforehand how to get to the location. So anyone who simply wants to trust my opinion on bosses and just go do them, follow the maps, and then the timestamps. Otherwise, I will show a little taste of each one to whet your appetite for destroying them. Without further ado, first today is located in the Kaled region of the game, essentially right next to the Church of Dragon Communion in the south. From here, you want to head out northwest and walk about 30 feet, and there is the boss. That said, I've been to the Church of Dragon Communion multiple times myself before I actually ran into this boss because I simply approached from the other direction. It's a cool boss fight, and as a reward, he unlocks a very strong incantation that inflicts Scarlet Rot on enemies. Now, a few seconds of warning before I show the boss itself, which is going to be Decaying Ekizikis, which sort of sounds like a Jojo name. <laughs> and he's the Dragon of Rot, not the Rotting Dragon, no, that's someone else. This is a dragon that has control of Scarlet Rot as its main form of element, and, well, it, it's really cool. It may not be particularly inventive as a difference from the other dragon fights during the fight, but as a concept, a Scarlet Rot dragon is absolutely terrifying. So the act of experience of fighting one is definitely a moment that you'll want to have yourself in your Elden Ring journey. Secondly comes a boss accessed in a really roundabout way that involves purposefully dying. The path to this one starts in the Lyurnia region, and the quickest way to get there involves being about halfway through Rhea Lucaria Academy. Once you're at this point, head to the Church of the Cuckoo site of Grace and, oh, make sure to spend your runes first, then out to the graveyard and follow the path until you reach the giant water wheel type elevator. Use this to go down instead of up, and then instead of jumping off at the bottom, just keep going until you fully fall off. At the bottom, you will find an enemy who exists to strike fear into you. What you want to do is die to them. Not not to anything though, don't, don't go ahead. Specifically, do you need to die to this grab attack? And well, it's not hard because they really, really want to do it to you over and over and over. Once you do die to this, you will be teleported to a location called Volcano Manor, specifically very deep in the lava section of this area. The path from here is more or less one way until you reach this big open chamber. Jump off the side of the main structure to walk off to the cave in the backside, follow this to the chamber at the end, and look for, or I guess watch out for, the pitfall trap that will bring you to the next area. Just next to a boss fog wall containing none other than today's target, uh, targets? Yeah, I can say targets without giving away too much. Much. Upon death, this drops a cool looking trident that doesn't have a particularly unique skill at all. Now showing you the actual boss located in this room themselves, it's the Abductor Virgins! These poor guys never get in any action. Well, maybe if they stopped abducting people, they'd be more attractive. Th that's right, you heard me right. The name of the enemy that you let consume you to kidnap you was an Abductor Virgin, and you ended that status, I suppose. In any case, this boss is two of the enemy that captured you in the first place, one wielding two saw blades and the other one with sickles on chains. As a bonus, when defeating the abductor virgins, all the NPCs will start to call you Abductor Chad. No, they, they don't. I, I made that up. Third on today's list is a boss found in the Altus Plateau, specifically just a bit north of this main bridge in the south, though you have to access it by going around as there is a bit of a cliff leading up there. At the top is a location called the Sainted Hero's Grave, and the first time that you arrive here, there will be a boss outside of the place on the ground level. Upon death, that boss will give you one of the best daggers in the entire game. Not going to show it until the boss section as it sort of gives away the boss, but this one is definitely worth going for for that reason if nothing else. Moving on to show the actual boss itself now, it is the Black Knife. He doesn't pose much of a threat as some of the other Black Knife bosses do in the game, but he is in a bit of a surprising location to find a boss in Elden Ring once you get more used to the formula of them sort of being inside the places instead of outside. And that dagger I mentioned earlier is pretty damn sick by the way. Big 
recommendations on this thing. Fourth up comes a boss that technically has two versions, and while I will be explaining the basics of how to get to both, I'll only be showing the specifics of the version that gives you a remembrance you can trade for boss gear. In both Siofer River and Nokron, the Eternal City, as you wander the area, you may notice these stone pillars with unlit torches. Lighting all of the torches in Siofra unlocks the boss in Siofra. Doing the same in Nokron unlocks the boss in Nokron, which is the harder version. What you've been watching on screen is the path to all of the torches in Nokron, starting off from the bridge in front of the Mimic Tier Site of Grace. With all six torches lit in Nokron, head to the Hello Horn grounds and interact with the creature there to be sent to the location of the boss fight. The rewards from this are pretty decent, but are things that you purchase at Roundtable Hold, so I'm not going to be showing you them before the boss. So let's show the boss in just a moment, and this one is called the Regal Ancestor Spirit. This is essentially the beast that all the little dudes in Nokron and Siofra pray to. A crazy spirit deer, and this fight is absolutely nuts in a really good way. I wouldn't describe it as particularly difficult as a fight, but it is quite the spectacle and an enjoyable time to behold as well. Fifth, then, is unlocked once you reach Lindell, the capital city, and specifically if you start from the Avenue Balcony site of Grace in the middle of Lindell. And head down this well, you will find yourself in a sewer system. This place is an absolute maze, and if you were hoping for a nice quick shortcut to the boss at the end, you're, you're going to be in for a little bit of a disappointment, because, well, what you're watching on screen right now is the fastest way that I know of how to get there, and is playing at about four times the normal speed, it is still going to continue for quite a while longer. On which note, if the path footage is ever going too fast for you, feel free to slow down the video to get the specifics. And about this time, if I'm lucky, we've reached about halfway on the path. I'm not kidding when I said this thing was long. How's your day going? Oh, you can't respond to me right now? This is a pre-recorded video. That's a bit sad. I might go make a sandwich or something. I mean, you guys don't really need me for at least another 20 seconds. Like, I wasn't kidding when I said it was long. Like, like it really takes a damn time getting this elevator thing. Elevator! Elevator! Who doesn't like elevators? And the sight of grace at the bottom of them. Directly forward from here is the boss that claims this entry on today's list, and it gives you a very nice talisman for the mid-game called Aired Tree's Favor Plus One. Without further ado, then, here is the boss himself, Moog the Omen. This is an earlier version of a later boss in the game, essentially just a sneak peek, a taste of something that will likely kick your butt much harder later in the game. He fights with blood magic and quite some interesting and creative ways, he looks funky, and the reward for defeating him is quite nice. On top of this, you can go through the entire game of Elden Ring without ever realizing that there is a sewer under the city if you don't go to the right places. That said, once this boss is defeated, don't be too hasty in leaving the area. There may just be a secret or two to find behind the chest. Just make sure that you don't open any doors you don't trust. You hear me? Sixth up today is, well, in his own entirely unique area, basically created for him. This one is a really big deal, specifically one of the six great rune bosses of Elden Ring, but a number of these bosses are optional, and therefore missable. This one, interestingly, while many people consider it one of the hardest bosses in the entire game, can be accessed surprisingly early in your journey if you want to. Step one, the first time you're at the first step site of grace, right at the very start of the game, a man in a white mask will be waiting waiting nearby to speak with you. If you've already left without speaking to him and you go back, he'll just leave a message on the floor that you need to interact with. This will tell you that you will be waiting for you at the Church of the Rose in Lyernia. He isn't lying, he'll be there. Find him there and he'll ask you to do invasions. So do three invasions and return to him to be given an item. Bring this item to the corpse of a finger maiden, the easiest one that you can find being at the Church of Inhibition in the northeast of Lyernia. Then return to the Church of the Rose, where he will give you another item. This time, use this item to be teleported to a whole new area of the Elden Ring map. For this reason, I've moved the spoiler block of this section to this part, so skip forward now if you don't want to see the map at all. The path from here, where you get teleported, is really as simple as go forwards up the stairs until you reach the gigantic elevator, at the top of which, and behind my gigantic hammer, will be the boss himself, who is... Moog, Lord of Blood. Don't expect an easy time here, really. This guy is built to hurt you, and he will. When he dies, he will eventually drop a great rune and a remembrance and a buttload of runes. And, well, you'll have completed an entire section of the map, so there is that too. Seventh, then, there is a boss that you reach at the end of Lindell, the capital city, but one that so many people can quite easily miss. After the end of this area, you are told to head to the next region of the game 
game, and naturally many players do exactly that in the most straightforward line possible, heading across the bridge and then down the elevator right out towards the next area of the map. If instead at the top of this elevator you continue towards the Divine Tower on this bridge, you will find a particularly cool boss fight which I will be showing on screen right about now, the Fell Twins. When you start this fight, all light is sucked out of the world. When you are fighting in a, in a black void against two demonic creatures, what hope can you have? They can very much be taken one at a time if you kite the slower one properly, but this one is much more about the cool factor than it is about the challenge provided. And when the fight is over, you can get yourself a named summon as a reward too, which isn't bad by any means as far as I'm concerned. Finally, today is a boss located in the consecrated snowfields region in the game, which you can unlock as soon as you can reach the mountain top of the giants. In order to get here, you need to assemble the Halig Tree Medallion. One half of this is directly east of the village of the Albanaric Site of Grace in Lyernia, being held by a man inside of a pot. The other half is all the way at the very tippity top of Castle Soul in the very north of the mountaintops region. Once you have the full medallion, go to the Lift of Rold near the start of the region and switch the prompt over to Hoist Secret Medallion to be brought to a whole new location, the Consecrated Snowfields. From the first site of Grace in the area, head directly northeast until you pass the carriage-based enemies, then keep going northeast until there is an inlet to the right side rocks. Follow them up to find a door to the Consecrated Snowfields Catacombs. The boss at the end here is a really cool enemy and not one that you are likely to have seen before this point in the game either. He also drops a piece of his armor upon death. Without further ado then, the boss of this location is the Putrid Grave Warden Duelist. This big boy fights with a crazy rotting great axe and it is essentially just another variation of humanoid enemies in the game and he definitely earns the category of boss. His attacks aren't crazy hard to predict but they do hit sorta of hard so he at least has that going in his favor. The armor piece that I mentioned him dropping is of course the cloak with no shirt so it's a chest piece without a shirt. I love it. Alright everyone I've been Cotton Dinosaur from Rage Gaming Videos and this has been 8 more optional bosses you really don't want to miss in Elden Ring. Are any of these bosses a surprise to you? Are there any even more obscure bosses than these hidden away in the game that you know about and we haven't mentioned? Like if you like the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye